Hello! We are the Group 3 of GE5 Art Appreciation and we are going to present about Impressionism Art. Are you interested in art? If so, take your pen and a notebook because we are going to tackle about an interesting movement in art. But before that, this is a good idea to take a look back at the previous art movements. The history of art movements tends to be broken up in isms, Romanticism, Neoclassicism, and so on. Of all these isms, we will present to you the Impressionism art. We will present to you Impressionism art using my magic ball pen and my magic white paper. So, let's now go on to my presentation. Outline Impressionism paintings is the most loved and celebrated artworks of all time. But, what is Impressionism? What is the characteristic of this movement? 2. How, where, and when did it start? 3. And how does Impressionism differ from the other art movement? Or what is the uniqueness of this compared to the other movement of arts? 4. 15 things you didn't know about Claude Monet. We will tackle all of this one by one so that we would be able to understand what is Impressionism and further up our knowledge about appreciating an artwork. Imagine you are at a situation wherein you are meeting a person. Is there a time where even at first glance you are already comfortable with him? And on the other hand, there are persons who also at first glance you don't like to be with because you know you will be uncomfortable? That's what we call impression. And in art, this is a movement started from 1860 to late 19th century on which we call Impressionism art. Impressionism art is one of the most identifiable and famous art movements of history, often referred to as the first modern movement. Now, the question is, where does the Impressionism art came from? The Impressionists took their name from an insult hurled by the press at one of Monet's paintings, Impression Sunrise. Critics specifically, Louis Leroy, heaped scorn on the work presented in the show as unfinished and compared it unfavorably to wallpaper, for which we can say that the word Impressionist was first used as an insult to the artist at that time. But before we discuss why, let us go back in time for us to understand more the reason behind the criticism. So now, let's proceed to the history of Impressionism. Impressionism art started on 1860, at France specifically in Paris. It was born during a time when the best loved themes were religious and historical, which has a very detailed shapes and subjects clearly emphasized. Many artists contributed to this movement, primarily Monet, Manet, Renoir, Sisley, and together with other people who share the same interest on painting on plein air. Plein air painting is the act of painting outdoors. This method contrasts with the studio painting or academic rules that might create a predetermined look. And people at that time dislike change. They are strict on the way of how the elements, subjects, and techniques of the paintings involve. And at the same time, however, French society was undergoing drastic changes that would soon be felt in all walks of life. These changes come in the form of advances in the science industrialization and economic developments, which led to the emergence of a new middle class. This in turn led some artists begin shifting away from the traditional subjects of the academy. That is why, on 1863, Impressionism art were not allowed to participate at the official salon. The salon is where artists could show their work, gain recognition, and make sales. 
That's also the reason why the Impressionist artists persist to continue on painting and spread what really is Impressionism art. So, the question is, how did they overcome this? Well, by organizing their own art exhibit to show their style of art. By that, people acknowledge their movement. And later, the amount of work that is being rejected by the official salon was staggering. The outcry led Napoleon III to decree the creation of the Salon de Refuse, a show of all the artwork which the Academy had rejected with the admirable goal of letting public decide for themselves if this emerging modern art was any good or not. The Salon de Refuse attracted huge crowds, and it was mainly paintings that disregard academic traditions which is the Impressionism art, and because of that, Monet, Manet, Renoir, and the other Impressionism artists got a chance to exhibit their artwork to the public. Then on 1873, they have established a society des artists independents. This is a society of independent artists. This organization was meant to spread, to broaden the ideas of Impressionism art because they want to prove that their art is a form of art. Because of that, on 1874, they had a collaborative exhibition or the first Impressionist exhibition took that was organized by Monet, Pissarro, Degas, Renoir, Sisley, and Bert Morisot. The exhibition displayed 165 works by 30 artists. And that was the brief history of Impressionism art. So now, let us take a look at the characteristics of Impressionism art by one of Monet's paintings. The Impression Sunrise This kind of artwork of Monet consists of body of water, boat, and the scenery in this art. We can see that it is not detailed specifically into the boat. As you will notice as a viewer, we can easily identify that this is a boat, even if it is not detailed. And second thing is that some of the part is blurred, just like on this background. The painting is not drawn with concrete shapes. And the subject was a scenery for which this is a scenery from Monet's hometown, Port of Luabra, which really disregard the way of the artist tradition of that time. And when the people from the salon saw the work of Monet, they said that it looks just like a sketch or it's like a painting that's not finished. And some viewers said that it's just an impression of an artist and it's not an art. That is why he called it impression because he was trying to capture an impression of what that sunrise looked like. This painting was the reason why Monet and the few fellow painters became well known as Impressionists. So, the art of Impressionism art is not detailed, not clear, and not precise. Since it is not detailed, some viewers take a hard time to understand or sometimes criticize the artwork of Impressionism artists. So now, let's proceed to the expression of Impressionism art. Actually, they express their thoughts on what they see, what they feel, and what they think. These are the way of or the domains of art piece of Impressionism to create an artwork. So now, how can we identify if it is an Impressionism art? Number one is that we must notice the lively color of the artwork. In Impressionism, the colors that they use are lively colors, meaning they avoid the color of black, they use the colors of the natural world or the things around them. Aside from the lively colors, they also use different and broken brush strokes. As you will notice on this artwork of Van Gogh, you will clearly see that the brush strokes have different directions. That is why sometimes, it appears that their artwork is not detailed. Then the second way to identify Impressionism art is they use everyday subjects. This is capturing the scenery of life around them. It means they use subjects on things around them 
So things like mountains, rivers, trees, things around us, and so on is included. Then the third way to identify Impressionism art is that they use outdoor painting or the painting on plein air for natural light because traditional painters draw their works inside their studio meaning they base their paintings based on what they think while the Impressionist artists paint outside the studio to capture the effects of light and they usually use smaller canvas that were easy to transport and finish quickly before the weather change. And lastly is the open composition. Impressionists use structured approach in placing and positioning their subject. Let's compare the artwork of these two paintings. You will notice the balance is different from one another. The one on the top, the subject is at the middle, which is a form of balance during the classical period because they believe that if it is the subject, it must be in the center. Or in the middle but on the other hand on impressionism art the subject can be placed everywhere by that we can say that impressionism art is different or unique in every aspect of painting from the classical period so that is why many people dislike the idea of the impressionist artist so again this is the different characteristics of how we can identify and also the uniqueness of the Impressionism art compared to the other art movement. And now, let's proceed to the 15 things you didn't know about Claude Monet. Claude Monet is born in Paris, France on November 14, 1840 and died at age 86 at the year 1926. Monet was a painter who is celebrated as being the founder of the French Impressionist movement in a lifelong career. Monet is perhaps best known for his series of water lilies paintings that consume more than 20 years of his professional creative life. But there is much more to this genius artist than the water lilies that we have come to know and love. Are you ready to know more about the founding father of Impressionism? Number 1. He served in the military because he refused to give up painting. 2. He was the founding father of Impressionist art movement. 3. He liked to paint the subject many times. He painted this subject over and over at different times of the day and different times of the year. The subject of his series included haystacks, poplars, ruined cathedral, water lilies, and mourning on the same. 4. Like practically every artist, he went through a penniless period. It was the time when the salon was not accepting his works and his fellow impressionists. 5. The highest price paid for a Monet painting is $110.7 million at Sotheby's when one of his haystack paintings was sold in an auction in September 2019, a ninth on the list of most expensive paintings. 6. Two of Monet's paintings are subject to an international legal battle to the Philippine government. 7. His first name was actually Oscar, Oscar Claude Monet. The reason why is to avoid confusion on their household as his father is also named Claude. His parents called him Oscar, but the world will definitely remember him as Claude Monet. 8. Giverny at Normandy was his home and inspiration. He lived on this village for 43 years, and the stunning surroundings serve as inspiration for many of his famous works. 9. He made an early mark drawing caricatures of his professor when he was only 5 years old. 10. Some of his works were once stolen from a Dutch museum. They say you can be proclaimed a true art master until someone is stolen your work. And thanks to the art heist of 2012 on a Tuesday morning of October, thieves stole the Waterloo Bridge by Monet and the Harlequin Head by Pablo Picasso. 11. His family wanted him to be a farmer. 12. He painted his wife on her deathbed. 
Monet's marriage to wife Camille was tragically short when she died of cancer at the age of 32. Monet paints his wife alone in her room, making it to be one of the most intense paintings of all time. 13. He suffered from cataracts in his old age, but even so, he continued painting and interestingly, you can actually see the progression of how the ailment affected his work in the way that objects start to become more and more blurry. Some would also argue that strong use of color in his later days were an indicator of the fact that he was using his memory rather than his failing eyesight. The perfect example for this is the way of how he paints the Japanese footbridge on 1899. And this is the Japanese footbridge he painted on his later days, 1922. 14th, he didn't just paint water lilies, he also planted them. 15th, he was greatly influenced by Japanese art. Monet looked to Japan not only for his gardening inspiration, but for his artistic inspiration too. So there you have it. 15 interesting facts about one of the greatest artists the world has ever known. Are you a fan of Claude Monet? Do you have a particular favorite of his works? So, for listening with us all the way, number 16. You can take a virtual tour to visit Monet's Water Lilies at Mosey the Orangery at this website. The painting covers 200 square meters of canvas which surround and envelop the viewers for which he said, It gives the illusion of an endless hole, of a wave with no horizon and no shore. This water lily series is the last painting of Monet, for which he spent three decades painting them, from 1890s to 1926, until to his death. Also, this is like a sense of legacy of Monet, because he painted this after the death of his wife and after the death of his son. So, what's your impression to the Impressionists? 